Welcome back to another Fantasy Pug video, guys. It's Chris, and today I'm going to be going over seven players you absolutely need to trade away as soon as possible. Normally, what happens early on in the season is a lot of managers like to panic when their star players or good players aren't performing at the level that they expected them to when they drafted them. Vice versa, there are a lot of lower tier players or players that aren't necessarily star players that have gotten off to a hot start that you could be able to leverage in order to use them as sell high players. This is what this video is going to address. We definitely recommend using the players in this video to leverage yourself into acquiring better, more talented players, even if they are struggling a little bit off the start it's very very important to just attempt to make some trades with these guys because their value is at an all-time high and they won't be getting any higher that being said guys let's get right into the video Starting off our list, we have Mark Shifley of the Winnipeg Jets. He's 86% owned currently and has five points in four games with three goals. Shifley isn't really known for his peripheral stats. He only has nine shots on goal, which averages to under three per game. And he's currently shooting at 33.3%. This is obviously a very hot start for Shifley, who has a history of being around the 70 point mark and getting around 35 goals. I completely understand if you wanted to keep this guy around and it really depends in your league scoring, but Shifley is not good when it comes to shot volume or hits. If you play in a league where peripheral stats aren't really that impactful, I totally understand hanging on to this guy. This is a great opportunity to leverage Shifley's hot start and get a very, very high value player that could be struggling offensively, but is much better when it comes to those peripheral categories. So use him to improve areas on your team that you're either struggling in or need support in like defense or goaltenders, or if you have a plethora of centers already that give you a good amount of depth you can trade him for an elite winger. Moving on to Brock Besser of the Vancouver Canucks, 76% owned. He also had a very hot start last year, if you guys remember. He had 15 points in his first 15 games, but this is unprecedented territory for Brock Besser, having five goals in four games played with 15 shots. The shot volume is definitely good and something that we've picked up on early on in the season that he does seem to be shooting more. But with Besser, he's never scored over 25 goals since the season of 2018-2019. He's never had had over 50 or more hits in the season period and he hasn't had 200 or more shots since that 2018-2019 season so use Besser right now where his value is at an all-time peak yes both Besser and the Canucks have had a hot start but use this leverage right now while you still have it again similar to Shifley if his goal scoring and production starts to slow he doesn't have any value as a player due to his extremely low peripherals I definitely recommend trying to upgrade Brock Besser are going forward just send out a couple trades they're very similar to Shifley you probably not the same value because he doesn't have a history of being an elite player but he should get you some value right now due to his hot start up next we have Vladimir Tarasenko of the Ottawa Senators he was somebody that I was considering leaving off of this list because he does normally get around 75 to 80 hits in a season and when he has been healthy he has had a pretty decent shot volume anywhere around that 230 shot mark but with Tarasenko Senko, there's a lot of concern when it comes to injuries. Not only that, he's had a really, really good start. Six points in four games. Every single person in fantasy hockey right now wants right wingers because of how scarce they are, which just makes Tarasenko even more valuable in trades. In the four games he's played, he's only had six shots and five hits, so his shot and hit volume haven't been eye-popping by any means. And with Josh Norris coming back off of injury, Tarasenko seems to be skating with Matthew Joseph and Ridley Gregg on the third line and is seeing power play two time now. I'm not too concerned about that because the fact that Ottawa likes to split up their power play. I would definitely be hunting for trades for Vladimir Tarasenko right now. Six points in four games is enticing enough for other managers to take some interest in him. Pair that with the fact that he's already at a very scarce position. And like I said, line three, guys, he's averaged under 14 minutes time on ice over the past four games. So that should tell you all you need to know about Tarasenko. I'm looking to sell this guy at every opportunity. I think if Carter Hart was on any other team and and he had the start that he's had so far in Philadelphia. I think I would be trying to trade a bunch of assets to acquire him. He's one of the better young goalies in the National Hockey League. 
It's just the fact that he's on a terrible team right now. And some of you might be saying, well, they can't be that bad. They're winning games. They have Couturier back as well as Cam Atkinson. You guys got to remember that Philly also had a hot start last year where they started off their first seven games going five and two and then proceeded to lose 11 straight games in the month of November. With a 929 save percentage right now, Carter Hart's value is at an all-time high. I would highly recommend selling on him before it's too late. For example, you could look at teams that drafted Andre Vasilevsky and if they're panicking already with their goaltending, Carter Hart could be a very valuable piece for them. So if you need to shore up your defense or or maybe add another great scoring winger with some shot volume. I definitely recommend selling on Carter Hart right now before the ship begins to sink. If you're looking to sell high on a defenseman, I recommend Jacob Slavin. He's 43% owned. He has five points in his last five games. He's only ever had one season with more than 40 points. This is a great opportunity to upgrade your D while you can. He also doesn't get any power play time whatsoever. You can use Slavin in a piece to try and do a two for one trade or a two for two trade to where you're able to upgrade one of your defensemen, but use Slavin right now while you can especially in deeper leagues where he's had such a hot start and you're able to try and find a defenseman that maybe didn't have that great of a start, but still offers you a lot more in terms of peripherals, especially. When it comes to Slavin, he does have a pretty good block total where he'll have over 100 blocks. So if you count that in your league, I can understand. But outside of that, every other peripherals category like hits and shots are something that he's very lackluster in, especially in plus minus leagues. I would value him as a solid fourth or fifth defenseman, but I would still be trying to trade Slavin away as soon as possible, given the fact that he's a point of game player right now and his peripherals are normally subpar. I also also wanted to give you guys some deeper options for those of you that are in deeper leagues. William Carlson is a great one. He has five points in five games played, only 18% owned. We all know that one season he had where he scored 43 goals for Vegas's inaugural season, but typically Carlson is a 55 or lower point producing player with a low shot volume and low hit volume. He's also just playing third line right now in Vegas and seeing power play two minutes. Again, the power play minutes are a okay because Vegas, similar to Ottawa, splits up their power play. But this is still a great opportunity to trade Carlson away while he's hot to address other concerns on your team and hopefully get a player with some better peripherals going forward. Finishing up our video and another good deep option to sell while you can is Jesperi Kotkaniemi. Only 13% owned. He's got five points in five games and has had surprisingly good shot volume to start the season. He is line two power play two, so I think he could be a little bit more valued than, say, Carlson is, for example, right now, especially given the fact that Sebastian Ajo is dealing with an early injury. He's still young, only 23 years of age, but he's never had a 50-point year, guys. I don't know if this is something that is going to be coming in the future or if he's kind of just locked in where he's at in Carolina. This is also somebody you could potentially hold on to and see if the good production continues and then use the more sample size that he's had to potentially trade for an even better return. But with Kotkaniemi, given the fact that he hasn't really proved himself yet, I would totally be okay with moving him right off the bat. He also very surprisingly had 100 hits last season. So if you wait a couple games and see if those peripherals come up again, you can leverage this guy to get an even a bigger return. Definitely recommend selling on Kotkaniemi either now or as soon as he has a blow up game. That is going to do it for this video, guys. Thank you so much for watching. Let me know in the comments down below who is somebody that you are looking to sell high on early on in the season. A lot of the time, you're just not given the opportunity to sell on some of these players because their value typically isn't where it is right now. So again, I definitely recommend using the players in our list to upgrade your team's needs. Use the players in this video and pair them with the players in Mike's video that he posted yesterday where he went over some buy low targets for you guys. Definitely recommend checking that video out if you haven't already, but that is going to do it for this video, guys. Thank you so much for watching. Have yourselves a fantastic rest of the day.